we discussed China in 2008 and the potential paths that China might have taken going forward. And you talked about how some of the assumptions people had back then were reasonable, despite the fact that they didn't come to pass, the future is, is impossible to predict. That said, how do you see the next 10 years or the next several years unfolding as it relates to China, specifically in regards to the issues that you work with in Freedom House? Well, I certainly feel that if you look at our reports, both Freedom in the World, also we do another report called Freedom of the Net, which looks at uh, freedom of online users. And that's actually something we haven't talked much about, but that's an area where China has actually been kind of a pioneer in mm -hmm. terms of controlling the information that gets to Chinese people. So there was a quote that Bill Clinton made in the 90s I'm not going to get it exactly right, but it's sort of directionally the, what he said. He said, he said, China is not going to be able to uh, really control the Internet because it's going to be like nailing uh, jello to the wall. And that's actually not proven to be the case that China has this so-called Great China Firewall, has two million sensors, maybe more. And uh, they have really been very successful in blocking uh accurate information from getting to the chinese people and now they are in one of our reports we did several years ago really stepping up efforts to export those tools of digital authoritarianism to other countries which are uh they've been doing trainings for countries like vietnam or other countries to help them learn how to better control uh the internet so i think that the issue of human rights freedom democracy these are going to be big issues going forward. I, I don't see things getting better for a while. I, I would just say that I tend to be sort of a hopeful person. And in general, I do think democratic change moves in waves. If you look at history, you know, we're going now through a particular downturn, but I do think that in the long term, uh, people uh, do not want to be controlled. And, and, and uh, I think uh, the human heart, uh, the demand is for freedom. Uh, it's not a Western value. It's not a China, it's a global value. And I, I think I just look at what's happened in Taiwan, which has been one of the biggest uh, uh, freedom success stories over the last 30 years. Uh, that's a Chinese, uh, those are Chinese people and, the, and they, they are now have one of the world's most thriving democracies after having a military dictatorship there after, uh, uh, after for a long time after uh, the fall of uh, uh, the Kuomintang in the mainland uh, in 1950. So I think, I, I do feel hopeful in the long term. And I do, I, I do think, again, I'm not a China expert, but when you talk to people who are expert on China, I think they often will emphasize this idea that you don't really know how brittle things are inside China from the outside, many of us. And so, uh, you know, Xi Jinping is under the same pressures that President Biden is. He has to deliver economic results. He has to deliver economic growth. He has to deliver, uh, uh, you know, transparency and, and corruption can be very corrosive. And you look at like what's happened in Shanghai with the COVID lockdowns over the last few months, I have to imagine that that is not making the Chinese government too popular right now uh, among the Chinese people. So I think it's important not to lose hope. Uh, we, we have our own problems in our own country, of course, uh, not anywhere near as severe as the problems in, in China. But I, I do feel hopeful in the long term, but I think we're for having some bumpiness going forward.